Hello everyone. Welcome to the channel The Pharmacy Talks. Today in this lecture we are going to discuss about the drugs used in the treatment of asthma. And their mechanism of action. So before starting today's discussion, please subscribe to our channel if you're new here and press the bell icon. So let's begin. Anti-asthmatic drugs can be classified into following classes. First is bronchodilators. They are further classified as beta-2 simple thermometics. Examples of beta-2 simple thermometics are salbutamol, terbutalin, and bamterol. Methylxanthines. Examples of methylxanthines are theophylline, aminophylline and doxophylline. Anticholinergics. Examples of anticholinergics are aprotropium bromide, and sheotropium bromide. Second class of anti-asthmatic drugs are leukotriene antagonists. Examples of leukotriene antagonists are montelukast and zafolucast. Next are mast cell stabilizers. Examples are sodium chromoglycate and ketotifen. Fourth class is corticosteroids. They're further categorized as systemic and inhalational. Systemic class includes hydrocortisone, prednisolone and other glucocorticoids. Inhalational corticosteroids include spiclomethazin, fluticasin, bitsnide, cyclicinide and flunicosine. Last class is anti-immunoglobulin E antibody. Example is omalizumab. Now we'll discuss the mechanism of action of anti-asthmatic drugs one by one. Firstly we'll discuss the mechanism of action of bronchial dilators. These are the drugs which do the relaxation of bronchial smooth muscle and thus help in treating asthma. So firstly we'll discuss what are the drug targets for bronchial dilators. One of the drug targets is beta-2 receptor. In the normal physiology of body, epinephrine binds to this receptor and activates the adenyl cyclase and converts ATP into cyclic AMP. This further causes the inactivation of myosin-like chain kinase which is responsible for contraction. Thus beta-2 receptor agonists are dilating the bronchial smooth muscles. So beta-2 sympathetic drugs are given to further stimulate this process. Thus they treat asthma. The examples of beta-2 simple thermometics are salbutamol, terbutalin and bamterol. Now if the cyclic AMP formed during the process can be converted into AMP due to action of phosphodesterase. This can cause asthma. So to treat this, methylxanthines are given. They inhibit the phosphodesterase and thus prevent the decyclization of cyclic AMP. Thus they treat asthma. Examples of methylxanthines are theophylline, aminophylline and doxophylline. The other important drug target is muscarinic 3 receptor. In the normal physiology of body, acetylcholine binds to this receptor and activates the phospholipase C system and converts phosphoinositol triphosphate into inositol triphosphate and diacylglycerate. This increases the intracellular calcium levels by their significant mechanism. Inositol triphosphate from the sarcoplasmic reticulum and diacylglycerate increase the calcium levels by opening L-type calcium channels. This increased intracellular calcium levels causes contraction and in case of asthma it worsens the condition. So to treat this anticholinergic drugs are given which inhibits this muscarinic receptor and treats asthma. The examples of anticholinergics used are ipratropium bromide and sheotropium bromide. So these were the mechanism of action of bronchial dilators. Now we'll discuss the mechanism of action of leukotriene antagonists. These are the drugs which completely antagonize the cysteine leukotriene 1 receptor. So the drug target for leukotriene antagonists are cysteine leukotriene 1 receptor. When cysteine leukotriene significantly leukotriene C4, Leukotriene D4 and leukotriene E4 binds to the cysteine and leukotriene 1 receptor. They cause bronchoconstriction. They increase the vascular permeability and cause edema. They cause the proliferation of smooth muscles which further worsens the condition of asthma. They causes recruitment of eosinophils. They also increase the mucus secretion. All these factors are responsible for causing asthma. So to prevent this, 
leukotrien antagonists are given which competitively antagonize the cystine leukotrienes and themselves binds to the cystine leukotrien 1 receptor and cures asthma. The drugs belonging to this class are Montelukast and Zafolucast. Both these drugs are very safe. Only side effects are headache and rashes. Cystine and leukotriene 1 antagonists like Montelukast are used in case of aspirin-induced asthma. But they are not used in case of COPD. Now we'll discuss the mechanism of action of mast cell stabilizer. These are the drugs which inhibits the degranulation of mast cell and other inflammatory cells triggered by different stimuli like dust, smoke etc. When an antigen enters the body, there is increased production of interleukins. And this increases the level of immunoglobulin E which binds to the mast cell. When the allergens binds with immunoglobulin E in mast cell. This causes the degranulation of mast cell. The histamine or other mediators are then released from the vesicles and degranulation occurs. This further causes the hyperactivity of airway and bronchoconstriction and which results into asthma. So to prevent this, mast cell stabilizer are given which inhibits this degranulation process and thus inhibits the release of histamine or other mediators. Drugs belonging to this class are sodium chromoglycate and ketotifen. Note that chromoglycate is not a bronchial dilator and it doesn't antagonize the action of histamine or other mediators. For asthma, they are administered as an aerosol through inhalers. With this we conclude our today's discussion. Like this video if you find this valuable. Subscribe to the channel. At the last. Thanks for watching.